What's going on guys? Welcome back to Civilization 6 as America. In the previous part, we settled the city of Charleston. Uh, we started producing our very first trait routes. We have one trait route slot available. And we are going to scout a little bit down south because we haven't really seen that much over there. And in the meantime, we're going to be focusing on taking out these uh, barbarian scouts. Because if they make it back to their outposts, we're going to get in a bit of trouble. And I would like to avoid that. So I'm going to go after this one first. I don't know if that's a good idea, but that's what we're doing. We spot up barbarians approaching our city of Washington. I already knew that. Uh, you don't really have to tell me that, but okay. We're just going to go after them. I mean, they are scouts, or they are actually a lot quicker than I am. Sometimes the wheel turns slowly, but it turns. And there we go. So we've discovered the wheel. This gives us access to the heavy chariot, which is apparently a really, really strong unit. Uh, they gain one bonus movement if it begins a turn on a flat tile with no woods, rainforest, or hills, which is pretty good. I mean, that's just a bit extra movement. I like that. And we can also build the water mill. Uh, which will give us extra food and production and also bonus food if you have rice and or wheat, which we do not have over in Washington, but we will actually have some rice in Charleston. Uh, so it could be pretty good. We have hey. discovered a city-state. Establishing diplomatic relations with them will surely be beneficial for our empire. Perhaps we should send them an envoy. All right, so this is the... There are several different types of city-states, and each may provide different benefits in return for our friendship. Our government, over time, will allow us to earn envoys to grow these relationships. Our city-state neighbors have made a request of us. If we can impress them, I think they will reward us handsomely. All right, thank you, advisor. So I know by now um, how these city-states work. So this is Yerevan. Uh, their quest is for us to send them a trait route. And this opens up the city-state menu, this button. And as you can see, we've only really met Yerevan. Now here we can see their bonuses that they would give us um, if we send some envoys. So we get one envoy at 100 influence points. Now these are actually generated I guess automatically. I'm assuming it's the palace that does this. Although I might be wrong. I'm not entirely sure what generates these points. I think you just get one automatically. Once you get 100, so after 100 turns in our case, you get an envoy. And then you can choose where you want to send it. Uh, obviously right now we would have to send it to Yerevan. But if we do that, we get two faith in the capital. If we send three... We get two faith in every holy site district, which we don't have yet, but, you know. Um, and then once you send six, you get an additional plus two faith. And if you have three envoys and more than any other civilization, you get a unique bonus. So here it says your apostle units can choose from any possible promotion instead of receiving a random one. And they will also follow you into war. You may enter their lands. Uh, you can start improving their lands. If you wish, you get their luxuries. So it's actually really, really powerful to be a, um, a city said suzerain. Now, let's see. Alright, so they want us to send a trait route, which actually is a possibility. I might send it from Charleston or Washington to Yerevan just to get that envoy because, I mean, that's really powerful. Also, I will just switch between calling it envoys and envoys because I, I still don't know what the proper way of pronouncing it really is. Just so you guys know. Uh, let's see. We do have some stone here. I'm just checking out the research that we could possibly do. So animal husbandry, I guess right now wouldn't really make that much sense to me. Seeing as we have no animals nearby, it leads to archery, but we don't even have a slinger, so we cannot get that boost. So it would take us a whole while to get that. Uh, on the other hand, we do want to get a builder as well. I'm just trying to figure out what the best of these would be. Uh, so this would also give access to Stonehenge, which will give you a free great pro uh, profit. Great profits may found a religion on Stonehenge instead of a holy site. Must be adjacent to stone and on flat land. So basically you get a free religion instantly, which normally we're actually not getting any great profit points. 
Uh, and it would take us quite a while to get there, but if we just get Stonehenge, then we would instantly get a great prophet and thus a religion. Uh, on the other hand, we could also just make a holy site. These are all things to consider. How much production do we even have in Washington? It's seven. So making Stonehenge would actually take really, really long. Uh, so for now, it might not be the best idea. So what I think I'm actually going to do is go with bronze working so we can see iron on the map. Uh, we will we will actually still be expanding quite a bit, making more cities. And the ability to see iron is actually going to be really valuable there. Look at that. So we found uh, one encampment. But there is still one out there that I would love to find. But at least we know where this one is. Now as soon as we get some more units, we are going to go out there and destroy this one. Because we do not want... Oh, here's the scout. Look at that. Hello there, little scout. I'm going to try and block... No, I'm not going to try and block him. That's stupid. I'm going to wait one turn. I'm going to cross the river and try and take him out. Where are you going then? He's just running around a whole bunch. I'm going to keep going after him. I'm not sure if I'll be able to catch him because I think that it really relies on him making a mistake. In his movement. And when he does, I can catch him. Alright, the scout ran away. Let's go after him. Yeah, see, we can't actually reach him. Let's do this. So they're gonna have to run over there, or over here, actually. We'll see what they do. I might just actually let them run away. Eventually. Looks like Yerevan... Oh, no, it's Norway, actually. We haven't met them yet, but I saw their little... ...unit. See, that would be bad. Alright, let's- I'm gonna try to move in there. And fortify. And see if maybe we can take out the... Encampment there. Alright, so we've just finished our monument. It was a monument, wasn't it? Not the granary. Oh, we have both, so that's good. So our next option, they're suggesting a campus. We could get a water mill. For that bit of food and production. Uh, but a campus would be really, really good. Because of the science boost. At the same time, I would love a builder. Or a slinger. Alright, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a slinger. So that we can get the boost to archery. Right? All we have to do is just kill a unit with a slinger. It's not rocket science. If we can actually do that, we get that boost. And then in the meantime, we'll make a builder. After him. Oh, actually, that's where they're from. Now I get it. Alright, so if I send in both the warrior and the slinger... Uh, I think that should give us a bit of an advantage. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's real bad. That is a horseman. I'm gonna run. Uh, who did we just meet? Lisbon. They want us to trigger an inspiration for mysticism. Uh, which is bad because... Oh, actually it's not. Alright, let's see. Oh, we have to found a pantheon. Actually, we're really, really close to doing that anyway, so... That's good for me. Alright, let's go this way. You are gonna heal. Alright, so we're, we will actually do their quest, and if we do that, we get one envoy. Which will give us plus four gold in the capital, which is actually really valuable. Uh, so as you can see, city-states are much more important, at least... ...in the sense that they give bigger bonuses in... The past. With its changing empires that rose and fell. And you can foresee the future too. They give bigger bonuses in Civilization 6 than they do in 5. Alright, production towards settlers, reduce the cost of purchasing a tile, and we can now get open borders as well. Uh, the strength against barbarians I actually kind of like. And we could do away with the faith one, but we need a pantheon. We need to wait one turn. Before we could actually get that. So I'm going to leave it as is for now. Alright, so I'm pretty sure that Norway is down here somewhere. Let's choose our next civic. So if we build a district, we get a boost to this one. That's actually uh, kind of far off for now. We will get the boost to mysticism. But we cannot actually use these policies that they would give us. 
So I don't think that's that good. Although I would love to build the Oracle. Because that is a really, really go uh, good wonder. Great general points. I kind of like the one that gives us um, a production boost towards cavalry. That's not bad, but again, pol political philosophy is by far one of the most important things, so... I'm gonna go after that one because that will unlock the different, um... Government types. So here we go. Uh, again, I'm not sure yet. I don't, I don't want to say that I recommend getting this first. But, um... The number of faithful has grown. And it is time for us to define our beliefs. Let us choose a pantheon to worship. Thank you for the interruption. Uh, but no, the different government types are really, really important to get as early as you can, really. We have trained our first ranged unit. Capable of hitting enemies from afar, while out of the range of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yes, that's great. Thank you. Yes, alright, look at that, we got another village. We are gonna grab that. All right, let's stop this guy. And then you go here. Oh, we've got him now. He's not gonna be able to escape the wrath of my slinger. He's probably gonna run here, but then we can still hit him with the slinger. Uh, so we might actually get this guy. All right, so let's choose our Pantheon. Now this is still pretty similar to the way it was in Civilization V. Although, of course, the actual bonuses have changed a lot, I think. Uh, let's see. And in Civilization V, you would always go for something that gave you faith. But that's not really necessary anymore. Because everything's different now. So I'm gonna look at... we've got a lot of coffee nearby. See, if we get Goddess of Festivals, we get extra food from this coffee. And I like that. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Goddess of Festivals, actually. And our progress towards mysticism has advanced considerably. Which is good because now we've done Lisbon's quest. We are automatically sending one envoy to them. So is America, or one unmet player. We are America, of course. Uh, so we get plus four gold in the capital. Again, that's a lot of money right now. So I like it. So these quests are actually really important to try and at least do. Because you stand to gain a whole lot from it. Alright, let's do that instead. As much as I like that extra culture, I feel like I want to get that trait route as soon as I can. Alright, Washington. So you made the slinger. That's good. See, a heavy cherry would actually be really, really powerful. Uh, at the same time, a uh, water milk could be good. Just for that food. So would a campus for the science. But our science right now is actually looking pretty decent, I think. I think I'm going to go with a builder. Just because I know that there's a few uh, boost possibilities here that require you to, you know, farm a resource, uh, build a quarry, build a pasture, build an iron mine. Uh, lots of these improvements will trigger these boosts, so they are... Pretty important when it comes to that. All right. And then also, once we get irrigation, we can actually get plantations on the coffee. I'm also interested in creating a lasting legacy. Because bronze will last for thousands of years. All right. So this gives us the ability to make an encampment, which is another type of district. Uh, this is a military type district. It will give us one great general point every turn. And one culture and one production... It says per citizen, but I think uh, per citizen that actually works in this district. And we can place in it the barracks, uh, which will give extra combat experience to um, melee and ranged land units. And it gives us a bit of pr production, a bit of housing, a citizen slot so that someone can actually work in this district. Another great general point as well. Uh, so it's pretty good. Now, it doesn't look like we have any iron nearby. We were actually standing on some here. A relic. If we can house this for our people to see, I am certain it will attract more of the faithful to our lands. All right, so apparently we just got the footprint of the apostle. 
Created by Martyred Apostle Relic Displayed in the Palace. Let's see. So this is now giving us plus four faith and eight tourism. That's cool. I didn't know that they could actually give you great works. I like that. All right, please tell me you can kill him. I need this. Oh, come on. I don't even... How much does he even have left? This is just unfair. It even told me he would die. All right. Let's see, you're out of... Yeah, you're out of turns. All right, so we did just... Or actually, no, we did not trigger the archery boost. Uh, which I don't like, because I really thought it was going to happen. All right, so if we build a quarry, we can get masonry quicker. Uh, let's see, irrigation. If we get irrigation, just research it, our builder will be able to actually get plantations on the coffee, which I would love. So I'm just going to grab irrigation real quick. Because we do want to be able to actually harvest the luxury resource that we have. Especially because these amenities... Let's see. So this is the city detail screen. It's got a lot of information on it. But it says we have one amenity of one required. I think you need one amenity per every certain amount of citizens. I don't even know how many, to be honest. Uh, but if we get another luxury, we get one more amenity and the city will grow quicker. And if you don't have enough amenities, the city will actually cease growing or slow down. Which is obviously something that you do not want. Alright, so these amenities are really important, as is housing. I am seeing a lot of iron over here. Some fish, some crabs. Alright, so in eight turns, we're actually going to get our trader. Alright, let's just keep going. Mostly waiting for that builder so we can show, or so that I can show how that works. I know a lot of you probably already know, like if you are, if you've been following... Organisms don't think of CO2 as a poison. Plants and organisms that make shells, coral, think of it as a building block. So this is our very first natural wonder, the Great Barrier Reef. It is a two-tile natural wonder that can be found on coastal terrain, and it provides plus three food and plus two science. Through exploration, we have discovered a natural wonder of the world. There is no doubt that it could provide a great benefit to the one who settles the land surrounding it. Yep, so that is really valuable. Discovering a natural wonder has inspired your people with the majesty of the universe. So we get a boost to astrology. I honestly did not expect this to happen. Um, because, you know, natural wonders are just like Civ 5. They can be really hard to find. Sometimes you just stumble upon them. Uh, but that's really nice. So we do get a boost to astrology now, which will be very helpful later on. Where did he go? Looks like he ran somewhere else, maybe. All right, we'll take care of that. Uh, so we might actually want to consider settling another city out here, depending on what other resources. <laughs> All right, so here we go. It's Norway. A Viking unlike any of the seas and lands I've ever known. Ha, are you afraid? Uh, so we could say thanks, but we have no time for pleasantries. And we can say, would you like to visit our nearby city and sample our hospitality? All right. So I think what that does is that it shares... Actually, no, it does not. All right, I don't really know how that works yet, but basically you can invite each other in a certain way and see where the other's capital is. Apparently, I, sh I just shared mine, but he didn't share his, uh, which could be bad. Now, this guy just walked right into me. I like that a lot. Thank you. Because this will boost our archery. This is what I was really waiting for all that time. I do appreciate that ever so much. And uh, not to mention this guy earned some experience. I actually did manage to find the experience bar. It is all the way at the bottom, and it is incredibly tiny. Maybe it's because my monitor is so, like, you know, because my resolution is so high, but... It really does seem just excessively small, almost. I, I had to look a long time before I finally found this thing. 
All right, let's see. All right, so we've met Harold Hardrada. We don't know where he is, although, you know, we've seen a, a unit of his somewhere around here earlier. Uh, so he's probably, you know, somewhere out here. I'm guessing he's not too far away. All right, you're good, warrior. Stay strong. You can do it. Now let's get our hands on this builder, finally. See, we can instantly destroy this guy because of all the boosts that we have. And then also he's already, you know, wounded, so he uh, loses a bit of his strength there. All right, well, we took care of him. That wasn't too bad. Barbarians are approaching Charleston. This could be bad. There's probably another encampment somewhere down here. Um, but I don't think we really have to worry that much, seeing as Japan's right here. So I'm guessing they will actually take care of any barbarians in the area. Maybe that's naive of me to assume. But I sort of trust him to do that. Okay, so let's... See, we can actually make a quarry now on the gypsum. Which would also trigger... Where are you? This boost. We would get masonry a lot quicker if we do that. Obviously, we want luxuries. Like I said earlier, the amenities are really, really important. So, as you can see, this builder has three builds. So, they are completely different from Civ 5. No longer will you just make improvement after improvement. They only have three uses right now. And if I built this... There we go. Quarrying a resource is giving you the raw materials you need to employ masons. So now this guy has only two builds left. It's pretty straightforward, but it is really different from Civilization V. Please let there be something good here. Oh no, is that a city-state or a civilization? Because I would love to actually work the uh, Great Barrier Reef. Alright, so this is where things get a little bit trickier. We do have in the city now, well, we, we, it still says one amenity of one, uh, but we actually are going to get one more. So it says, uh, to gain housing, you place improvements like a farm, fishing boats, pasture, plantations, and camps. And we will do that, obviously. Uh, but for now, we have eight housing for four citizens. So we could grow, I believe, to about seven population without too much of a problem. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a campus. I think it's about time that we did this. And this is, like I said earlier, this is the ideal spot for a campus. So we're going to buy the tile. And build our campus right there. It's going to get a lot of bonus science, which again is really valuable. And another thing that I do want to point out, by the way, which I didn't know myself earlier. Is if you look at the campus right now, the cost is 103 production. But if I were to make one here now. Or actually... Wait, hold on. Am I seeing things or? Well, apparently. All right. So this is the only thing I really know about it. The cost for your districts will go up the more you have. Say with settlers. Uh, so basically, you have to be really careful about how you place things. You know, how many you produce because they get more and more expensive. So you could have one city that has everything or you could spread it out more. Uh, you can really play how you feel would be the best way to go about it. Alright, let's see. Scout guy. Let's see what this is. Laventa, your contact with other states has crystallized your ideas on governing your own people. So we get a boost towards po uh, political philosophy. Which, uh, just to be clear, is this one. Right? It's the incredibly important one. So I'm really happy that we just met three city-states. Because this will be really, really good. All right, so we might still be able to settle here, actually, and work the Great Barrier Reef. As the first major civilization to meet the Leventa city-state, you have earned one envoy there. I'm guessing, yeah, it's two faith and the capital. They're not influenced by anybody else. Your civilization has a good relationship with this city-state. It will not declare war on you unless it has a foreign suzerain that does so. Uh, which it doesn't. So yeah, you can actually be friendly with the city-states as well. I like that. So they want us to train a galley, apparently. Sad thing is, that will not be happening. Because we have no 
harbor or whatever you even need to get a galley. I honestly don't even know. I don't know if that's bad. It probably is actually. All right, so another thing we'll get is we're gonna get a farm right here just because it's gonna look cool. And then to finish off this builder, because he only he's only gonna have one more use after this, uh, we're gonna grab some coffee down here as soon as irrigation is done. All right, we got a little Norwegian scout here. Oh my, look at this. This would be a really good spot to settle. All right, so I, okay, that was an accident. Nope, did not mean to do that. I mean, I don't mind. All right, look at that. So we have a farm here now. Which isn't that great yet, but what it does do is provide 0.5 housing. So it says 8, but we have 8.5 right now. Uh, so if we get another farm, we're going to have 9 housing. Uh, so even if you do not have fresh uh, access to fresh water, you can make a lot of improvements to sort of combat that. Or amend it, I suppose. Grit enough to bring about the afforestation or the irrigation of a country is not less worthy of honor than its conqueror. All right, so we can now make plantations, which will give us extra gold, uh, a bit of housing. It will give us uh, food and gold even more eventually as well. Uh, and because of our pantheon, we're going to get more food out of it. So this is great. Plantations will be really nice for us, and it unlocks the hanging gardens, which I don't think we'll be able to make. But it seems cool. All right, we got 40 gold. It's not a big deal. I was hoping for a little bit more than that, but it's still free, so I sh I, I will not complain. Right, let's go after these guys. I mean, it's not even necessary to do this, but we're going to be safer. We get some experience, some gold out of it. And somebody just made Stonehenge. Good for them. All right, let's go after the coffee now. So for our next research, see, we're getting a good amount of faith. So I feel, I feel like a holy site right now is not that important. Uh, eventually, of course, it will be just so we can get a profit. Oh, other people are already rushing towards a profit. Now, there is a limited amount of religion that can be or religions that can be founded. Uh, so you don't want to fall behind too much. All right. Uh, that does sell it, though. We do need a holy site. Just so we can get a religion. So, astrology it is. Alright, he wants to do an open borders deal, and he'll give me one gold for 30 turns. Actually, I don't need that gold, so I'm going to say no. Because I think it'll make him like me a bit more. I'm not entirely sure that's true, but it would make a bit of sense. Oh, I just made another scout. Look at that. Alright, I'm just going to swoop in there and instantly destroy the encampment. The remaining units are just not strong enough to kill my uh, my warrior. And look at that. We got some nice gold. Again, it's not the biggest deal in the world. It's just a bit of gold, but I do like it. And then... Yeah, I think I might want to try and just purchase a settler. So that we can keep focusing on the, all right, on first of all the campus, and we do want to get the holy site pretty soon after. I'm thinking. There's a lot of stuff out here. Honestly, this is a great spot for settling. I think there's lots of uh, water, some nice resources around, and obviously the Great Barrier Reef. So maybe settling here wouldn't be that bad of an idea. Because so far, I actually have not settled on the coast yet. Uh, not in this game or in the other one that I've played. Because just the way that coast works now is completely different. You don't have to be on the coast to get fresh water or boats even. Alright, so Charleston has produced a trader. If we send him to Washington, we get a bit of food, a bit of production. Not, a bit, not that big a deal. I'm going to trade with Yerevan because they want me to. There we go. To bringing riches to our civilization, this trade route will gradually develop roads between our cities. Roads allow our units to no longer be impaired by the difficult terrain through which they pass. Sweet. So because of the trade route, uh, your trade route directly exchanges goods, but a medium of exchange would make trade more flexible. So currency is now boosted a bit. 
Yarvan's happy with what I did, so I'm now getting 10 faith per turn, which is actually quite a bit. And we're gonna start making a road, or at least a trader will make a road towards Yerevan. In the meantime, we will have Charleston make a granary. And they will actually be allowed to focus on growth now. Although they don't have that much food. Uh, so a builder might be a good idea there as well to make some farms, get some more food. All that goodness. Hatusa. I don't even know how to pronounce that, honestly. They want us to train a heavy chariot. And if I do so, I will get an envoy, which will give me plus two signs in the capital. And again, this might be a really good idea. It's a free envoy. It would give me a stronger military unit, which, you know, I am definitely not opposed to doing that. Here we go. Let's get a plantation. So now, if I'm not mistaken... I'm sorry I'm playing really slowly, but I'm just taking my time and really taking everything in. We now have eight housing. I feel like we should have more, though. Maybe it's only if you actually work. All right, let's try something here. Ah. I think... Oh, I just didn't update yet. All right, so we're good now. My bad. All right, lock that one in. Definitely lock that one in, and that one's fine. Yep. All right, take him out. Let's get some experience, boys. There you go. It's not even that much experience. All right, it's like a really, really small amount, actually. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, anyway, guys, I'm actually going to leave it here for now. In the next part, we're going to try and settle near the Great Barrier Reef. I would absolutely love to do that. There's lots of food there, a bit of science. Uh, there's more stone, more coffee, bananas, some crabs out in the ocean. I think that could be really, really good. Uh, so we're going to try and go out there. hope that nobody else swoops in and steals it. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.